What if I told you the majority of the world has a more positive view of China than the United States? Now, this might sound shocking to those of us who live in liberal democracies, but what about the 6.3 billion people who live under a different form of government? A new study from the University of Cambridge reveals some shocking information about how polarized and divided our world is when it comes to the opinions of China and Russia, the two countries most people in the West have been trained to fear. But once you remove yourself from the bias of Western media and outside the echo chamber of Western democracies, the data shows us that 70% of the world has an overwhelming positive view of China. What does this report from Cambridge mean for the future of our world? Well, let's break it down in today's YouTube video. Let's start today's analysis by first verifying the credibility of this report. For this study, Cambridge University brought together surveys from 137 different countries, which represent 97% of the world's population. Recently, I've seen some incredibly biased reports on China, like this one from Pew Research entitled, How Global Public Opinion of China Has Shifted in the Xi Era. To make the data as biased against China as possible, Pew Research only surveyed the United States and its closest Western allies, completely ignoring the opinions of everyone who lives in the global South. As a result, Pew Research produced an extremely biased report that served little purpose other than to reaffirm the already negative image of China that exists in the West. But according to this Cambridge report, the world is now split into two sides, those who live under liberal democracies and those who live under different forms of government. For the 1.2 billion people who live in liberal democracies, that's roughly 20% of the world's population, 75% hold a negative view of China, and 87% hold a negative view of Russia. But here's the incredible statistic. For the 6.3 billion people, that's 80% of the remaining population who live outside a liberal democracy, 70% of people feel positively towards China, and 66% feel positively towards Russia. What's even more remarkable is that for the first time ever, slightly more people in developing countries, 62%, are more favorable towards China than the United States, 61%. One of the major factors that is now influencing this flip is countries who are participating in China's Belt and Road Initiative. Over 60% of the world's population is a living in a country that is part of the Belt and Road. And when China is coming into your country and building tangible assets, it's easy to understand why. Let's take Africa, for example, where China has built over 100,000 kilometers of roads, 10,000 kilometers of railways, nearly 1,000 bridges, over 100 ports, and scores of hospitals and schools. Every week on my YouTube channel, I get comments like this. I'm an African and China is our good friend. USA is looting our resources and sanctioning us when we try to make our lives better. Look at Zimbabwe, Libya, etc. Everyone, this Cambridge study is so important to analyze because it reveals one of the biggest problems in our society, the incredible bias that all news organizations have. It's now impossible to read a single news story for a well-rounded view on any issue. And if you've been watching my videos recently, you know that ground news has become my number one tool to research global events. Ground News is a news comparison website that helps me analyze the bias in news and learn how both the left and the right are reporting on the situation. As this Cambridge study reveals, Western media has an extreme bias against both Russia and China. So I use Ground News to help me fill in the gaps and help me better analyze content. I simply type in China and instantly find dozens of new articles. Take for example, this article about Vice President Kamala Harris. Ground News has compiled 36 different sources to make this report and analyze that 46% of the sources are centered in the middle. This means this report has less bias and is highly factual. To help me become a more rounded consumer of content, I simply scroll down to the blind spot section and can read articles from both sides of the political spectrum. If you're more liberal, read this story about Michael Bloomberg. If you're a conservative, read this story about foreign government spending. As someone who analyzes China, I need tools to help me see through the incredible bias of Western media and stay true to my mission of making the most objective and truthful videos about China. I'm honored to partner with Ground News, and again, this tool has become my number one resource for staying informed in today's crazy world. And because it's Black Friday this week, Ground News is offering you their best offer yet. Save an incredible 40% off their Vantage subscription by simply going to ground.news Cyrus or clicking the link in the description below. Despite China contributing to the development of poor and smaller nations, China's reputation amongst developed Western countries has been on a steady decline these past five years. Western democracies began shifting their opinions on China around 2017 exactly the same time that Donald Trump launched his trade war against China. Almost immediately, we began seeing an uptick in anti-China media in the West. One year later, in 2018, the US government launched the China Initiative.
Initiative, which placed a target on the back of every Chinese scientist and professor working in America. The program was an absolute disaster for America, and as I highlighted in a previous video, thousands of world-class Chinese-American scientists are now leaving the U.S. and returning to China. In 2018, we also began seeing more stories of the Uyghurs in claims of cultural genocide in the controversial Xinjiang region. The Western reports of Xinjiang and China's treatment of Uyghurs have been the most influential effort to change Western public opinion of China. However, this Cambridge study reveals a remarkable phenomenon. As highlighted by this graph, Middle Eastern countries' opinion of China has steadily improved the past five years. Meanwhile, Muslim organizations such as the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, whose slogan is the collective voice of the Muslim world and whose stated goal is to safeguard and protect the interests of the Muslim world, has praised China for its treatment of Muslims. Now, the big takeaway from this Cambridge study is how polarized and divided our world has become. Over the past decade, people who live in high-income democracies now all hold a negative view of China, while countries in South America, Africa, Middle East, and Southeast Asia all have become more positive about China. What's alarming for the United States and other high-income democracies is it reveals a potential problem for the future of our own democracies. Perceived shortcomings in democracies are actually causing more people in the global South to change their opinion about China, with many becoming more open to the thought of a different style of government. Here's the most important stat that you should remember from this Cambridge study. 73% of people who feel positive towards China do so because they are dissatisfied with how their democracy is performing. Just look at this Bloomberg article entitled, To Save Democracy, We Need a Few Good Dictators. In this article, the author argues people in developing nations want stability and efficient governments more than the right to vote every few years. I can speak firsthand of this since moving back to America earlier this summer. I participated in U.S. elections for the first time in 15 years. And while voting is an important civic duty for American citizens like myself, nearly every American that I spoke to expressed some level of frustration and lack of hope for the future of our very own democracy. No matter which side of the political spectrum you stand on, every American knows that the United States is going to have a rough few years ahead politically. Even the New York Times reported this last month with this article highlighting that many voters see democracy in peril, but saving it isn't a priority for them. The conclusion of this report is very important, but it essentially presents two potential paths for the future of our world. The first option is the United States will double down and continue its attempt to contain China and also take on Russia. Articles like this opinion piece have hit mainstream newspapers in America, already convincing the American public that the U.S. can indeed win both battles. The Cambridge poll shows the U.S. has been successful in changing public opinion of China and Russia amongst other high-income democracies, but ultimately, countries will have to choose what is in the best interest of their citizens. Take, for example, the Netherlands. It was the first EU member to drop 91 different sanctions against Russia. The Netherlands desperately need Russian energy for the upcoming winter months, and Dutch officials officials dropped these sanctions without the permission of the European Union. It was a groundbreaking example of a Western country acting in their own best interest, and just last week, the Dutch minister doubled down and sent a clear warning to the U.S. that America cannot dictate their approach to China exports. For decades, the United States has led the rules-based order that seeks to turn the world into a group of liberal democracies that are ultimately under the control of the United States government. But don't forget the statistic I opened up today's video with. Over 6.2 billion people. That's it's roughly 80% of the world's population don't live in liberal democracies and remain open to collaborating with countries in different forms of government. Over the past few months, I've highlighted why countries like Saudi Arabia and Iran are considering joining both Russia and China in the BRICS network. I made videos about why the Caribbean islands and other countries around the world are wanting to use China's digital currency to break away from being 100% reliant on the US dollar for international trade. The world we live in today is too unique and too diverse for only one form of government to exist. And moving forward, smaller countries want the ability to work with every country in the world. Most importantly, the two biggest economies, both China and the United States. In my opinion, there is only one option for the future of our world, and that is a world that promotes coexistence. There are many countries in the world that are like South Korea, a country who relies on the United States as their largest military ally, but also rely on China as their largest economic partner. How does South Korea choose between the United States and China? How does Australia, who is in the exact same position 
position as Korea, choose between the United States and China. The reality is, is that no country in the world should be forced to choose sides. All countries should be coming together and making this planet a better place by encouraging more innovation, more collaboration, and most importantly, show a willingness to coexist and contribute to a better world together. Everyone, thanks for watching today's presentation. And again, a huge thank you to Ground News for sponsoring today's important message. Make sure you take advantage of this amazing offer. Click down in the description below to get started. In addition, if you're interested to see what the world is going to look like when the United States and China do not work together, make sure that you watch my latest YouTube video detailing how 1,400 Chinese scientists are leaving the US and moving back to China due to fear of the United States government. Click here to watch that video. And again, thank you for spending time with me here on YouTube, and I'll see you all in next week's video.